Welcome back to the Lagoon of Mystery and another moment of Kiki. Before I get started tonight, I wanted to say that uh, the first two episodes that have been aired were all filmed and composed prior to the coronavirus pandemic that is sweeping the globe right now, uh, as is much of the footage for episodes that have not aired. I wanted to take a moment to uh, offer my condolences to the 9.9 million Americans who have filed for unemployment this past two weeks. Uh, members of my family are among those. Uh, it's a very trying, stressful time. Um, a lot of us don't know uh, where the next paycheck's coming from or how we're going to get by, but uh, I work with virologists and other experts in the field, and this is not something that's being blown out of proportion. Uh, it's a very serious time, and real lives are at stake. So anything that you can do to help uh, flatten the curve, as the popular saying goes, uh, practice social isolation, uh, and just avoid groups and avoid spreading this disease that often goes uh, asymptomatic and not even noticed in many people who actually are infected, we'll get through it that much sooner. In the interim, I hope that my silly little videos that I am filming and posting uh, bring some uh, entertainment and respite to those of you out there and maybe you get a chance to try new things and entertain yourself while we are in imposed uh, self-isolation. So this episode I wanted to uh, address uh, many of the people who may be new to Tiki. Uh, I know three years ago I was one of them and it's a very deep and twisty rabbit hole to fall down. When I started off, I had no idea that Tiki existed outside of a bubble in the 1950s, and I quickly learned otherwise. Uh, but it can be really daunting. There's a lot of complexity, a lot of history, uh, a lot of shared knowledge that is kind of opaque to a newcomer, and hopefully my videos kind of pull back the shroud a little bit. but. I can't do it all myself, so I want to make a recommendation, a book recommendation, uh, that really helped me out when I was first uh, developing my interest in Tiki. Smuggler's Cove uh, by Martin and Rebecca Kate is a phenomenal book. It's the first Tiki book I ever bought, and having bought many, many others in the past, um, this remains the one I would recommend to newcomers to Tiki. Just across the board, there are many excellent books out there, uh, fantastic books uh, that I highly, highly recommend. But for the newcomer who does not know much, if anything, about Tiki, this would be the gold standard. Uh, it came out in 2016 from Tin Speed Press, which is a small publisher that does outstanding uh, cocktail books. Um, it's lavishly illustrated, uh, gorgeous, gorgeous pictures throughout. And uh, it really gives an overall all-encompassing uh, view of the tiki scene, both past and present. It doesn't necessarily go into as much detail as some other books, but for a basic working knowledge, this is really hard to beat. Um, Martin I mean, Rebecca break this down into several sections. The first one, um, logically enough, is the origins of Tiki. How it started, they address uh, the history, how Don Beach, uh, Ernest, Ernest Gant, who is actually a Texas native, born in Mejia, uh, so Texas gave Tiki to the world, you're welcome. Uh, how Ernest Raymond Beauregard Gant uh, invented uh, what we now know as the Tiki Bar in 1933. Uh, it also gives a history of uh, Victor Bergeron, who um, initially wanted to go into business and franchise uh, Don the Beachcombers, and when Don Beach rebuffed him, he went and opened uh, Trader Vic's, which is still going strong worldwide today. They also discuss Stephen Crane, who was the sometimes forgotten third man of Tiki. He was responsible for the Contiki chain of Tiki establishments, also Ports of Call, and a number of other ventures, um, which left a lasting mark 
uh, long time legacy, and he's actually the one who introduced tiki's into tiki bars, which ultimately gave them the name. After the history of tiki, um, Kate goes into the tiki revival, uh, some of the key figures who uh, factored into that. He discusses Smuggler's Cove, uh, the namesake bar that he wrote the book on, um, discusses his philosophy and strategy and journey, the long and winding road, so to speak, on how he got to the place where he opened Smuggler's Cove, which for many is the definitive modern tiki bar. Um, there is a short course of rum on rum in here, which if you are a newcomer to tiki or cocktails, even if you've been around cocktails for a long time and are more familiar with uh, gins and bourbons and whiskeys and vodkas, rum is kind of this opaque category. You think that, okay, it's Malibu and Bacardi and that's about it. Rum is as big and as deep a rabbit hole as tiki is. Uh, there is no spirit category more diverse or more confusing than rum is as a whole. And Martin takes a somewhat unconventional approach uh, to categorizing rums, but it's and it's really understandable once you start looking into it. Now, the best way to learn is by doing and experiencing. Um, but this is a good starting point. Uh, after the rum short course, he goes into tiki at home. How you can develop your own home tiki bar. How you can throw tiki parties, uh, tiki decor, tiki music. He really covers the entire spectrum of the tiki scene. He even goes into some of the tiki conventions that occur around the country every year. Yes, there are tiki conventions that are attended by thousands upon thousands of fans of the lifestyle. So let's say we make one of these recipes now. The recipe that I have chosen for today is not the first one I ever tried from this book, but it has become one of my ongoing favorites, and I go back to it time and time again. Uh, it's called the Kaitor Swizzle, Kaitor Kaitor, I'm not really sure the pronunciation, uh, but it is named after the Kaitor Falls in Guyana. So, it is a swizzle, which is interesting in that it is built in the glass you're serving it in. So, recipe calls for three quarter ounces of lime juice, that's half an ounce, and the remaining quarter, half an ounce of maple syrup. This is interesting because this is the first cocktail I have ever had, tiki or otherwise, that included maple syrup as an ingredient. That works pretty well. Half an ounce of falernum. Two ounces of aged Guiana rum. Um, I use El Dorado 8, which is a very fine rum. You can use El Dorado 5 or some other of your choice. I use 5 quite often myself, but for this one I kind of prefer El Dorado 8. And finally, to finish it off, two dashes of Angostura bitters. Bitters are exactly what their name claims them to be. 
They add a bitter element to it, which helps balance sweetness and tartness and all sorts of other. And at this point, you stir, you swizzle. Swizzle with the swizzle stick. Maybe one of these days, I will discuss the history of the swizzle stick. Suffice to say, many bars and home bars customize theirs, and many people collect them. So that's another big thing in tiki circles. And once the swizzling is complete and it's thoroughly mixed, top it off with ice. Add a straw and garnish. I forgot my garnish. Be right back. I'm back with my garnish. Fresh mint picked from my garden area. You smack the mint to rupture the leaves and break free some of the oils and release the aromatics. And I'm not a huge fan of mint, but the scent adds to the flavor profile of the cocktail. Um, you taste something with your nose and your eyes before you taste it with your mouth. And try drinking a cocktail that includes mint without it, and then include with it, and you will notice a distinct difference. Mm. Good stuff. So, until next time, take care, stay safe, and remember to social distance. Bye.